We have now used n as a multiple, where n can have the value 1, 2, 3, 4, and so on. That means if an electron is in the first orbit, n will have a value 1. The electron is in the second orbit, n will have a value 2, and so on. Now, we can actually solve for v from that equation. Can you solve for v from there? Now, v will be equal to, divide by mr, it will be v equal to nh divided by 2mvr, isn't it? So, v equal to nh divided by 2 pi mr, and that is the orbital velocity of the electron, the velocity of the electron in an orbit, where n equal to 1 is orbit 1, n equal to 2 is orbit 2, and so on. Therefore, if you now come here, k e squared over r is m v squared over r, and I'm going to replace v by this quantity, nh divided by 2 pi mr. And what does that give you? Now, you must work it out along with me. Don't just watch it. But take a pencil and paper and work it out. Simplify this and see what that gives you. If you square this quantity, on the numerator there will be n squared h squared, and this will go to the denominator, will be 4 pi squared m squared r squared, and 1m and that m will cancel. This r and the r squared will become r cubed. So the simplified form will be k e squared over r squared equal to n squared h squared over 4 pi squared m r cubed. Well, I hope you know what all these quantities are. E is the charge of an electron. Anybody recall what that value is, charge of an electron? Well, let me see if I can write that down for you. Well, we have used these values earlier. The mass of the electron, this is the mass of the electron, and it is 9.1 times 10 to the negative 31 kilogram. The charge on the electron is 1.6 times 10 to the negative 19 coulombs. So, you have K e squared over R squared. R is the radius of the orbital electron, equal to n squared h squared over 4 pi squared m r cubed. Well, we can do some simplification here. Let's see what we can do with this. Well, if r sub n is the radius of the nth energy level, well, what was the energy level? This is the first energy level, the first orbit, the second energy level, the second orbit. So R sub n, R1 is the radius of the first orbit, R2 is the radius of the second orbit, and so on. Then, if you solve for that Rn, can you do that from here? Solve for R, well, you can see R squared on the left will cancel with uh, R squared on the right, leaving an R there. And if you solve for that R, it will give you r equal to n squared h squared over 4 pi squared k e squared m or I write it like this h squared over 4 pi squared k e squared m times n squared alright this is a constant h squared over 4 pi squared k e squared m is a constant all right. I want you to take your pencil and pen and work out the value of this now. I have given you the values of all this. H, you know the Planck's constant. K is the constant in Coulomb's law, which is 9 times 10 to the power of 9. E is the electron charge. M is the electron mass. All right. Take a piece of paper and pencil and see whether you can find the value of that now. Did you get a value for that? H is 6.64 times 10 to the negative 34 and square it. 
divided by 4 pi squared. K is 9 times 10 to the 9. E is 1.6, I messed it up there, times 10 to the negative 19 and square it, times M, the mass of the electron. And uh, what does that give you? Well, did you get it as 5.29 or 5.3 times 10 to the negative 11? meter and that will be 0 0.0529 n squared nanometer and that is the radius of the nth orbit if you put n equal to 1 you get the radius of the first orbit n equal to 2 will give you the radius of the second orbit and so on well so Bohr is right on its way to find a much more viable model of the atom now the energy En of an electron is E sub n, the energy of an electron in the nth energy level is negative k e squared over 2r sub n. Now this is actually something that we've learned in mechanics, the potential energy of an object at a distance r is m1 m2 divided by r is that right negative negative g m1 m2 divided by r and this is the same thing potential energy of an electron separated a distance rn from the nucleus is negative k e squared over 2rn this is something we already did earlier now, if you now replace this Rn by the value of Rn that we calculated, or Rn equal to this quantity, and that becomes K e squared over 2, and Rn on the denominator became this quantity. And simplify that, you get the energy of an electron, a very important quantity, the energy of an electron is negative of 2 pi squared k squared e to the 4 m over h squared times 1 over n squared. All right, I want you to find the value of this now. Well, I calculated that as 13.62. So look at this quantity energy of an electron in the nth orbit is negative 13.62 over n squared that's the n squared there electron volt well the joule is a very big unit for measuring energy of an electron so it is measured in a unit called electron volt what's an electron volt an electron volt is the energy needed to accelerate an electron when it is subjected to a potential difference of one volt. The energy acquired by an electron when it is accelerated by a potential difference of one volt is one electron volt. And what is the relation between a joule and an electron volt? Does anybody know? Well, one electron volt is 1.602 times 10 to the negative 19 joules. And it is a measure of the kinetic energy an electron will acquire when accelerated by a potential difference of 1 volt. All right, let's do a small example. Find the orbital radius and the energy of an electron in the first excited state. Now, n equal to 2. n equal to 1 is called the ground state. n equal to 2 is the first excited state. n equal to 3 is the second excited state, and so on. So, once again, when I refer to the ground state, why is it called the ground state? Because that's the lowest level. N equal to 1 is the lowest level, the ground state. So, find the orbital radius and the energy of an electron in the first excited state of a hydrogen atom. What is the speed of the electron in this state? 
Well, we have obtained an expression for the energy already. Is that right? Well, we know that the radius r sub n is h squared over 4 pi squared k e squared m times n squared. When n equal to 2, you get the radius of the second orbit. So this is the radius of the second orbit. What we need to do is put in all those values and calculate that, and that will give you 0 0.0529 times 4 nanometer. This we calculated as 0 0.0529 nanometer. All right, times 2 squared which is 0.212 nanometer. And that's the radius of the second orbit. And the energy of an electron in that orbit will be negative 13.62 divided by n squared, n equal to two. And that will be negative 3.41 electron volt. All right. And what is the velocity of the electron in that orbit? V equal to NH over 2 pi MR. We had that again obtained earlier. So keep track of all the simple relations. And what all we need to do is now put in all these values where this R is this value. Well, this value. All right. And that will give you 1.1 times 10 to the power 6 meter per second is the electron speed in the second orbit. Well, you need to do this all on your own. Don't just depend on me. Very often I make mistakes and you need to point out this to me. All right. The allowed orbits are characterized by the energy of the electron in that orbit and are labeled n equal to 1, n equal to 2, n equal to 3, and so on. In fact, the first orbit is n equal to 1, n equal to 2, n equal to 3, and so on. And we talked about that already. Now, n equal to 1 corresponds to the lowest energy level, and we call that energy E1. And the lowest energy level is the ground state. If the electron receives a specific amount of extra energy, if you are able to supply some extra energy, now how can we supply extra energy to an electron? Well, we can actually supply extra energy to electron by heating an object. And you just saw I lighted up a hydrogen source. What I did, inside that source, you have an electrical discharge. When you pass an electrical discharge through a material, electrons receive extra energy. So, an electron in the ground state, if it is given some extra energy, now not any amount of extra energy, extra energy exactly equal to the difference between these two levels, then electron will absorb that energy and jump from n equal to 1 to n equal to 2. Or, if it gets exactly the amount of energy difference between N1 and N3, it will absorb that energy and jump from N equal to 1 to N equal to 3, and so on. So that's the mechanism. An electron can absorb energy and jump from a low energy level to a high energy level. Now, this electron is now said to be an excited. The, once the electron has jumped from a lower level to a higher level, the atom is said to be excited. It is no longer normal. In a normal atom, you will find the electron in the ground state. Remember, we're talking about hydrogen atom. In a normal hydrogen atom, the electron will be in the ground state. The moment that electron has received extra energy and moved into an outer